Hi, welcome back to the breadboard. It's Friday, so review day. We're going to have a look at this brand new product in the market. It's a Schneider timer relay that is fully programmable. And what makes it cool is that you can program it using your cell phone and near field communications. It has an NFC radio built in and you can completely configure it, adjust timings and modes of operation all from a smartphone, whether that be iOS or Android. And the, it has two relay outputs and a trigger input to this. Uh, mains capable, DIN rail mountable. Uh, Going to put a picture up here for it. And uh, let's go have a look at it. It's actually a lot more interesting than it sounds because I know it's just a relay. But if you're in the industrial control or home automation and things like that and you need something to trigger uh, and then maybe have one output go high or low for a little while then another one following after that and you want to keep things simple then this might be just the job for you. It's, it's not even available yet. I got a pre-release sample of it um, so that I can show you guys and uh, it should be available very very soon and as soon as I know when I would let you know. But let's go look at, the, at it on the bench and uh, have a play with it. So this is the packaging it came in. Uh, nice little box, so we'll just pull it out of the box. That is what we're going to have a look at. Uh, as I say, it's a Schneider. The model is an RENF22R2MMW. And as I said, it's near field communications. Let me just zoom that in a little bit. So this is what the relay looks like. You have the NFC receiver on the top of it. You've got a couple of indicator LEDs, although I believe that the production version is having a separate um, LED for each relay that's in here. On um, my case, we've just got the one. Um, you've got six terminals on this side and three on the other. There are two for the power for the relay. There is one for triggering, which is Y1. And then there are two relays with uh, changeover contact. So you've got a normally open and a normally closed with a common for each relay. Now, one of the other really nice things of this is that according to the data sheet, it will work from anything uh, 24 volts to 240 volts AC, 50 or 60 hertz with 3VA, or anything between 24 and 240 volts DC. Uh, so that's pretty impressive. Obviously what's happening there is that it's got a little switching regulator inside and it's rectifying the mains and then supplying a buck regulator to supply power the electronics inside of it and if we can maybe we'll have a look uh, inside if I can get it apart but let's get it powered up first and have a play with it I'll put a couple of lights on and we'll look at the phone app and go from there so let's start the application on my phone and I will just log in off camera you need to go to their website and create an account for the application okay we're logged in now, the first thing you need to do, of course, with the relay is it needs to know what state it is currently in. So let me just skip the, um, the help here. So the first thing you need to do is read from the relay. So all you do is on the bottom of the screen here, you hit read. And then with the screen up like this, you just hover it over the... And there I have a read successful. So we're going to pick the AAT power on delay with pause. So we just hit the right and then put it over the relay and you get the successful write command and the relays will adjust to the condition and now we're ready to actually test. What's going to happen here is right now the inputs are high to the relay. I'm just turning on my meter. So I have 12 volts going into the relay and if I put my screwdriver in there to make it go to ground, so these lights will go off here, then that will allow the timer to start. And if I wait for three seconds, both outputs come on. I can then take this away and now because it's a power on delay, it will have no effect. Now if I just reset the relay, power it off, back on again, I can wait and it won't happen. Won't happen. Now if I put my screwdriver in front of the relay just for about a second, one, two, take it away, um, notice that the outputs have not gone on, but it's a delay, it's not a re-trigger. So if I just put it in front of it again, probably within a second, the outputs will turn on. 
there. So that's one setting, and of course that's how easy it is to program the relay. Now if I pick, say, something different, let's skip all the way down to the other end where we have the star delta, where we have a pulse to start the relay, and then you have the output one will come on, the way I've got this configured right now, um, output one will come on three after three seconds, and then output relay two will trip 99 mil, 990 milliseconds after that, and you should be enough to be able to see it and hear it. So let's just try programming it with that. And you can see there, it's a star delta relay, so you can't trigger it, but you can pause it. All right, so if I bring my relay here, let me just power it off and back on again, just let you see it. So on, I'm already high, so I'm in pause mode. If I actually take this low, one, two, three, trigger, trigger. All right, and if I redo this, the input's still low, one, two. Now if I take my input high, Okay, I'm now in the portion of this where we are here. So it's in a pause mode, so it's actually going to delay the starting. So if I re-trigger this with the power, you can see I can leave it for as long as I like, and it's not going to start. Um, it's gone be beyond the three seconds now. And if I simply put my screwdriver in front of here, one, two, three and there you go and to change the time it's as simple as um, coming in here let's just change the number of seconds so we'll make it a 10 second delay so then you just need to write that to the relay so we say write and again we put it near the relay let it write to it success and now it's ready for the next time so if I put this in to hold it the delay and I recycle the power. All right, it's going to go 10 seconds this time. A little relay actually pulses once a second as it counts down there, there. Okay, now if I, of course, do this without the sensor trip, then it's going to be in pause mode and it's going to wait. Right, and you notice that the relay is not counting down. See, the relay light is off. So if I now put my screwdriver in front of the sensor, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, on, on. So that's completely changed the configuration now of this relay, and all I've done is waved my phone over it. Now you can read the relays, you can lock the relays. The two outputs basically work as one relay except for the star delta control where you can delay the second relay up to just under a second of the first one. It'll run on 24 volts DC up to and, and or AC up to 240 volts AC or DC with no problems. The contacts are rated at 8 amps and you've got two changeover sets of contacts. As you can see it's very very easy to use and there are so many different configurations I'm not going to go through all of them right now, and you can have a look yourself. So we're in settings right now to change the functionality of the relay. You can actually go into diagnosis mode, and if I read the relay and put it over it, I've now put the relay in diagnosis mode, and it's showing me the state of the relays. I'm going to be able to individually control, Can you? yeah, you can still see these two lights over here. Right, one and two. So I should be able to control output one, turn it off, and write that. Now if I can tell it to turn off relay two in the same manner, write that, really. Okay, that's written successfully. And now that one's gone off. So you can manually control the two relays independently. Let me just go back to the um, delayed power on with pause, and we'll write that to the relay. All right, so we've rewritten that to the new one. 
there's actually an instant control here as well. So you can actually turn the relay on and write it. That's written. Now the relay will come on. And if I tell it to turn off and write, I can now take it back to automatic control. Sorry, turn it back off again for the instant control. Now the instant control only controls relay two, as indicated by the diagram here. This instant control, you can see it's only showing it on relay two. So you could set up relay two such that, um, you know, in this example we have a delayed start. So right now, if I power this up, it's going to count the 10 seconds and turn them both on, which is correct. But now if I tell this to be instant on with relay two, so just write that. Relay two is now on. So what's gonna happen now when I turn it off and I power back up, relay two is gonna come on immediately. I'm actually pulling the power out from the relay here and plugging it back in again. And even if I have my screwdriver across, it's actually now counting down. And relay one will still behave itself. There. But relay two is now being manually and independently controlled from relay one. Now, there are no modes that I've seen in here where you can control relay two and manually control relay one, but you know, that's just about how you wire it up. Anyway, that completes this on the uh, demonstration. Let's just go quickly to the uh, PC and we will just finish off looking at what some of the other features are that are in here. This is the data sheet that we have for the relay and this is the first page of it. There's no big introduction or anything and it's uh, in multiple languages. I think one, two, three, four, five, six here. Anyway, it's got a pairing indicator, a little LED. Uh, output indicators R1 and R2. Now the one I have being a sample only has R, not R1, R2. Uh, power supply indication and the antenna is actually underneath this. It's not on the outside, of course. Um, uh, scroll down a little bit. You can see here the specifications and the wiring diagram. So power across A1 and A2. And then you've got a Y for a trigger, if you're using a trigger input. It's connecting a sensor input to the relay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up a little um, Hall effect sensor so that we can trigger it from that. Um, here's the start of the function. So this is the default one is number one here, is a power on delay. And I think by default, as I said, it's normally set to three seconds power on delay. So you, this is the power coming on, the green lines. And relay one and relay two, together will delay a certain period of time and then come on. And of course, if the power goes off, then the relays go off. Um, you've got power on delay with a pause. So if the trigger input goes high, it will actually extend the delay time. There are a lot of different things here, and I'm going to put a link to this data sheet so you can have a look at all the different functions yourself. They pretty much all show the in relay one and relay two doing exactly the same thing. In all of them, except for the last one, they actually stay in sync. And if I just scroll down to the last one here, um, here we go. No, it's not there either. Where is it? Oh, here, they're not in the same order. So this is the QTT. It's a star delta relay, two outputs with split common and poor summation control. And um, what happens on this one is that relay one will come up a period before relay two does. And the maximum time between relay one and relay two is 0.99 seconds, so not even one second. So that's the only one that I've seen in here where it actually likes to have both relays doing something different. Every other one, um, both relays have to do the same thing. Now you can put it in a diagnosis mode, which will allow you to ind independently control the two relays, but outside of that, they're all controlled together. So here are the main three screens. We were looking at the settings before and scrolling down here to um, change the mode of operation for the relay. 
the diagnosis screen has one other feature that we didn't have a look at, which is that if you're having it operating, it will actually monitor the timer. And the third one is you can actually protect the relay. So you could put in a lock key um, so that somebody else couldn't just go up with a smartphone and change the configuration. Uh, that's pretty much the only other thing that I haven't, I think, already mentioned. Um, the installation is the same for any standard Apple Store or uh, Play Store for Android uh, installations, where you just navigate to it. Now, the one thing this also has is if you simply turn your NFC on and put your smartphone or whatever near the relay, it should launch you up and take you to the site to download the app as well. So it makes it a little bit easier. Everything else we've already looked at. So I promised you I would show you the inside of the relay. So I just wanted to tack that on at the end of the review. So here we go. This is the outside, of course, as you've already seen. So this is with the uh, backside cover removed. You can see some transistor drivers here, uh, rectifier up here and down here. I believe this is the one down here for the mains and as you can see here there's a guard gap been cut into the PCB for a bit of extra uh, protection from the mains. Um, I think there's a lot of power supply circuitry down here as well like a buck boost kind of, uh, well probably just a buck converter or something a fairly traditional kind of power supply. Uh, as you can see here this is a uh, prototype uh, that I have so the one that you will get when you start buying these in production probably will be a little bit different. Um, surface mount technology, the NFC, the NFC board is actually uh, connected on the top edge here as you'll see in a moment and it's um, parallel to the top surface of the board. So let's move along here. You can see I don't see any bodges or anything on here which is quite nice but even though this is a pre-production board. Um, same thing, just a bit zoomed out. So here's the other side of the board. Uh, this is the main microprocessor microcontroller that's going to be driving it. There is a picture in a minute with a bit closer detail. I haven't looked up the processor yet or anything. Uh, the power comes in from down here and up here, I believe. One of the A connections is up here, one is down here, which is kind of weird. I wouldn't have expected that. Um, but all of this is enclosed, so it's, it's an industrial kind of environment, so it's still going to be perfectly safe. And the PCBs look like there's a lot of gap in the traces and everything, so I don't think there's any issues there. So you can see here we've got some MOVs, a uh, couple of inductors, um, capacitor. I don't, I don't think this is a uh, cheap and cheerful capacitor dropper, because otherwise, if it was, you wouldn't be able to use it off of uh, DC. The rectifier and standard uh, power su switching power supplies will happily work on AC or DC, traditionally down to say 90 volts. This one's been designed to work much, much lower so that you can actually feed it with 24 volts if you want to. Uh, what else is on here? Here's the two relays that work independently. For This is for one channel and this one is for the other channel. And what else is on here of note? Well, the PCB here, you can see on the bottom of the lid, I have a better picture of that coming up in just a moment. Uh, that's not it. So that's a close-up showing the um, CPU and its surrounding circuitries. And here is the final one looking at the underside of the top of the unit. And you can clearly see the NFC coils that are around here. Now I, I had the occasional issue with my phone trying to get it to sync. If I moved it a little bit while it was communicating it wouldn't always catch and I would get a little error. I simply moved the phone further away, hit the right button again and then moved it back into uh, range and it seemed to work fine. So anyway, that completes the video I um, and the look inside. Alright, so that pretty much covers it. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Short and sweet, hopefully. And I will see you on the next review next week or the week after. I'm going to try and do reviews at least once every two weeks and intersperse it with CNC and power supply project work. So here's the review for this week. Done. Bye.